Hello and welcome back to the YouTube channel. So I ran the Berlin Marathon this past Sunday in a time of 3.48.56 I think. Was very transparent about this from my announcement video that I wanted to go into Berlin and just have a good time, find the joy in marathons again and I feel like I accomplished all of that. I feel like I had such a good time and I think that this was truly a complete 180 from my experience at the London Marathon earlier this year and I'm sure that many of you remember that and I think that given the somewhat similar circumstances around the weather at both London and Berlin, I wanted to do a video around, I guess, the differences in my experience in one race where I was trying to go for time, I was trying to go for the PB despite the heat, and another where I sort of let go of that time and just went out to run for fun, but also was very aware of just how hot it was and was very aware that my pace was never going to go faster than a certain pace. And I think that this can be super useful, especially as a lot of the races around the world are getting a lot warmer with global warming and the climate changing constantly. We've seen so many races that have been very warm this year, and I feel like it is a constant theme that I have experienced with some of these world majors, so I wanted to make this video and talk about some of the science behind it as well that I have researched and just create this because I know that after Berlin, even though I had a really great experience, I saw so many people posting about how frustrated they were with themselves or their race, and it seemed like a very similar story to what I experienced at London, so I wanted to make this video. It could be smart to actually work smarter with yourself in a race if it is going to be warm, and especially as we are only in the midst of autumn marathon season, and we've got Chicago and New York coming up, I think that this could also be useful if those races do end up being warm. So first, let's talk about how heat impacts performance. Okay, so most runners, myself included, do really just underestimate how much heat can impact your performance, unless you Live somewhere where it is very hot, very humid, and you are able to go somewhere and heat train sort of year round or for a couple of months at a time, especially in the build up to a marathon. I think many of us fall into the category of we don't really have that luxury and we don't actually just realize how much heat can impact our performance. So even a five to 10 degrees Celsius increase in temperature can impact your marathon race time by minutes over the course of a marathon. As your core temperature rises, your body will divert blood away from your working muscles to cool you down and your heart rate climbs faster for the same pace. And if you ignore that, that might be why you're risking a huge wall that you're hitting at mile 20 or maybe even a DNF. This was a common theme that I saw amongst runners as well as people that I knew and just common themes around a really, really high heart rate. And I think that this really came from people that were still trying to push that pace and still hit their goal paces. And I think that ultimately in pushing yourself so much and exerting yourself so much and pushing yourself sort of to the limit, I think a lot of people really hit that limit. And I actually ended up running into one of my friends, Leon, at one of the water stations who really did not look well. He ended up finishing the race okay, but I just feel like when you push yourself to your limits and you don't actually realize how much it's, just how much the weather is impacting you and your body, it can be quite dangerous sometimes. And if anyone else ran Berlin, you know that there were runners that were on the side receiving medical attention. And I think that it's just something that we should start to take into consideration and just take it in as a means of maybe focusing on listening to your body more rather than what your Garmin watch might be telling you. So in prepping for the heat, it kind of goes beyond hydration. So I tried to drink as much water as I could, just like many runners. And I know that other runners also really try and take into account like electrolytes and your salts, but I'm of the opinion that we get enough sodium from the foods that you eat, or if you have a good diet, you should get that enough from your own diet. But that's a conversation for another time. So hydration is important, yes, but acclimatization is also key. So if you really wanted to try and train for this in future, this could look like either running on a treadmill with more layers than you would normally wear, or if you plan your run later in the day to finish when it's warmer, but always do this safely and gradually. And in the week before the race, this is where you're focusing on hydration. And obviously make sure if you're not getting enough sodium in your diet that you are getting that 
through electrolytes to ensure that you are not depleted when it comes to sodium. And in terms of what you're wearing on race day, remember that you should aim to be wearing breathable, lightweight fabrics. A hat, a visor, sunglasses, SPF, these could all be the difference between you burning and you actually having a decent time. Now, if you really wanted to create a whole new race day strategy, you can think about heat adjusted pace zones. So this is where effort-based pacing beats pace-based pacing. Instead of obsessing over your watch, you focus on perceived exertion and heart rate. A general rule of thumb is for every five degrees Fahrenheit or two to or two to three degrees Celsius above optimal, expect to slow down by about five to 10 seconds per mile. This isn't weakness, this is smart racing. And again, listen to your body. If you feel any bouts of dizziness or rapid jump in heart rate, these are early signs of heat stress that you cannot ignore. Now, if you're within a race and you need to make some adjustments, these are some great tips that you can follow. I think the key here is staying flexible and hydrated. First of all, use every single aid station. At Berlin, we had cups and we had water pretty frequently throughout the race. And then at London, we had bottles. I definitely prefer bottles. I think a lot of people do, but I know that that's not the case for every single marathon. But when it came to Berlin, I don't know if it was because of the cup situation and you had it took maybe a little bit longer to pick it up and drink it. I think it was a bit quicker at London, but it just meant that there was a little bit more chaos at every single water aid station. And for me, I wanted to take this as a sign to walk every water station. And this is coming from someone who used to not let herself walk any portion of any marathon. And for me, I wanted to remind myself at Berlin that it was so vital and so important for me to prioritize hydration even though I was carrying a flask with me and changing it with Gabriel every kind of 10 kilometers, I think, 10 or 20. But it's just important to prioritize water and make sure that you're getting and staying well hydrated. At the beginning of a marathon, you can try to start drinking early and often to kind of try and beat the point of thirst that you might wait for. I think it's nice to beat it early, kind of almost like when you're fueling forward and having your gels earlier rather than later, because typically when it comes to like gels per se, sometimes we might wait to have that gel when really you should be fueling early. Same thing goes for hydration. You should be having the water earlier to kind of just make sure that you are getting ahead of it. And don't just drink water at the aid stations, by the way, you should be dumping it over your head. I think good key areas are over your head, the back of your neck, your wrists. These are points where you typically get quite warm and it's, they're good points that help cool you down. And by cooling your skin, it helps lower your overall body temperature. It's also helpful to kind of mentally reframe the entire race to kind of focus on heat as the challenge for the day rather than maybe a time barrier or time goal in your mind. Success doesn't always have to be about a PR. Sometimes it truly is just about finishing a race smart and safe and sensible. And when it comes to post-race recovery, make sure to get to some shaded area, or if you can get inside somewhere, put your feet up and make sure to continue sipping on fluids and getting carbs in and electrolytes in as soon as possible. Something important to note is that heat effects can linger. So watch for headaches, dizziness, or unusual fatigue over the next 24 to 48 hours post marathon. So the big takeaway here is that running a hot marathon can teach you patience and resilience, but it also helps you learn how to adjust your goals sometimes at the beginning of the race, sometimes mid race. And I think that that mindset truly helps you become a better runner for your next marathon season. So if you have an autumn marathon coming up or if you're training towards a spring marathon next year, just know that some of these marathons are starting to get quite warm and these are great tips that are very easy to take into account and things that are great to remember to just help you run smarter and have a better race experience. I think the huge difference between London and Berlin is that I was at London, I had too big of an ego and I didn't want to let go of my time goal until it became impossible. And I think I watched so many people at Berlin last weekend sort of get to that point and really struggle. And I think it just reminded me of what of that experience at London and how far I'd come since then. And I think that it speaks volumes when you can change your goals and just like readjust when needed rather than trying to cling on. And this is coming from someone who 
genuinely, I felt like my ego was too big and I didn't want to adjust my paces or any goals during London. And I think that a lot of the times we get so fix- we get super fixated on the fact that you might have had the perfect training block, that every single training run went to plan, that you've, you know, obviously invested a lot of money and planned for this marathon. But I think that it's important to remember that your health comes first. Listening to your body is very, very important. And I think at the end of the day, you want to remember that you want to run for longevity, not just for this single race. So there will always be another marathon. There will always be another race. And I think that these things are so key to take into account when just thinking about your next race or the race that you're training for. Know that it is not the be all end all. There will always be another race and you will always have another chance to run towards that time goal. Anyways, I hope that these tips helped. I will share all of the links of the research that I did for this video. And I hope that you subscribe because I come out with a new video every single week. And if you would like a video sort of breaking down the Berlin Marathon, or if you'd like to listen to that, I will have a podcast episode out kind of going into detail about the experience and really breaking it down sort of mile by mile, kilometer by kilometer. But overall, I really hope that you guys enjoyed the Berlin video. I really loved putting it together and I think it was such a fun day and I hope that it inspires you for your future marathon and you your future races. And I just always aim to inspire others through my own running and I hope that this video also educated you and just brought more awareness to the fact that Races are just getting a lot warmer and there's nothing that we can do about it. But yeah, unfortunately, races are getting warmer. But when it comes to weather on race day, it is just one of those things you cannot control. So I think, if anything, control the controllables, which is what's up here, and your body and how you run that race. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. Give it a big thumbs up if you did. Comment below what sorts of videos you'd like to see from me next. And I will see you in the next one. Bye!